In this video, I'm going to be looking at the Pro Tools I.O. Uh, and the setup there. So if I come here and look at the drop down menu, the first option you've got is hardware. As you can see here, the hardware I've got connected to my uh, device is the Universal Audio Apollo. And that's connected via Thunderbolt. The launch setup app basically allows you to access the um, interface's own software. So in my case, it would be the console software. And by clicking on that, it would then launch the console software. And I can make the adjustments should I need to, uh, if I need to make anything to kind of make it work happy with Pro Tools. That's the first part. The next one down is the playback engine. Now, because I'm obviously videoing this, uh, it'll create conflict. So what I'm going to do is show you through some screenshots of what the playback engine looks like. Here we've got the playback engine. Um, that's what it comes up with as a dialogue, first of all, within the window. And you'll notice that you've got the playback is the Universal Audio Thunderbolt. Um, and if I click on this, you'll see then there are uh, a lot of different options. The Pro Tools aggregate is if you are connecting multiple interfaces that are not the same. Um, so you might have, for example, like the uh, Apollo connected with a Focusrite or a Motu or something like that. Um, it means that you can aggregate them together and use them uh, happily within the same session. You've got the built-in output as well, which is the uh, speakers for the device. This will be useful, especially when you're working um, in the smaller rooms where you're uh, like these classes that you have with me. Uh, if you just switch it to the headphone output, you won't need to worry about the built-in input because you're not using that. The display port on the HDMI is only if you're connected to uh, outside sources. Um, the Sonar Works is something that I've got as well. Um, but so yeah, so the using your default interface is what you want to be using. You've then got this hardware buffer size, which goes from 32 samples to 1024. That's really for um, processing the audio and if you're how and the latency. Ideally, you want to have as low a number as possible for recording. So if you can get to 128 or 64 samples while recording, great, because there'll be a lower latency. However, the more plugins you use, the more errors you're likely to get, and they'll uh, coincide with pops and clicks and things like that, that as you try and record. If that's the case, then you'll need to then up the buffer size to 256, uh, maybe 512. Um a lot of them now will cope with the lower ones. Uh, 128 or 256 is a good uh, one to aim for. And then when you're in mix mode, then set it to 1024. Uh, and that then give you the least amount of issues in terms of playback and errors, especially when using plugins. The other settings that are there as well, um, you don't need to worry about too much. If I just go back to this one here, uh, leave them set up uh, and in place. Uh, let Pro Tools deal with that. And then the video engine is if you are doing things with video. Uh, in this case, we are not. And the last bit there is the disc uh, back playback cache. You can have um, Pro Tools store a certain amount of the project into its uh, cache so it improves the performance of the project. The other things we've got within the setup as well is we've got uh, disk allocation, which is how you, if you've got multiple hard drives, the peripherals you don't need to worry about unless you're using external uh, things like uh, Avid mixers uh, and any kind of setup like that. The I.O., however, is of interest. So the I.O. is about how you can route things and name things. So with regards to the Apollo, I've left it as the first two channels or first four, actually, as mic line. Um, and these have got microphone line input, high Z for guitar and some basses. Um, so this set is there and they are either stereo, that's how it comes up, or mono. And then my light, mic line is set to three and four. Interesting, you'll notice I've got things set up for the Kemper. So my uh, Kemper for the effects out of it with delays and stuff, they're set up as a stereo, left and right. And then because I named it here, I've got Kemper, DI and Stack. If I was to actually uh, label this correctly, I would put Kemper, DI Kemper stack, but because I labeled it here, it's labeled the same thing when it's got a left and a right. But it's just basically there's my original DI signal, and then there's the amp emulation as well. So I can separate. So, should I want to reamp 
a guitar recording, I've still got the original DI part, and then there's the actual amp sound that I picked at the time. So it's quite cool what you can do there, and that's how it would be named and labelled up when you bring it into Pro Tools. You've got your ADATs, if you've, your interface has got ADAT capability, and you can name those. So if it was a Moto 8 Pre, 8 Pre 1, 8 Pre 2, and that will then come up in the uh, Pro Tools lists for that. You've got Spidiff, Sony Philips Digital Interface. Um, you've also got, because it's the Apollos, they've got virtual ins and outs as well, that you can do some internal routings as well. So that's quite clever. You've then got the outputs, so monitor left and right is your main left and right out. Then you've got your additional lines and ADATs, and again, virtual outputs. And then with the Apollos as well, you've got QMix as well, so you can actually do things with the QMix sends as well. Um, and then buses. So you can actually predetermine names of buses, so I've obviously got the main out, so you've got your line outputs here. And then you'll notice here I've got um, with the buses, I've already named mine. So I have uh, submix drum stems uh, through to uh, effect stems I've got there. I've got preset reverb, bus names, effects, lead vocals. I've got a drum crush. And then I've got the spares. And again, within that, you can see that they are individual, independent mono ones as well. Um, so that is the setup in terms of how you can name things and, and start to customize your IOs. And then coming into the setup as well, the other thing you've got is your preferences. So something that's quite useful uh, within the preferences is how you can organize your plugins. So you can do it by manufacturer and category. So you could have it, or you can have it as a uh, category. So it could be compressors, EQs, reverbs, delays, etc., etc. Or you could have it by manufacturer or the whole lot. I tend to find it quite useful if I want a specific manufacturer, whether it be UA or Waves or whatever, Click on that, I can go into the waves and find it. Um, and the category can be sometimes useful. You want to see a list of different types of compressors if you're not quite sure what you've got. Um, so that's really useful. You can then go into um, operations and you can see other th enable things as well, but you won't need to worry about the information that's there, apart from you've got your backups as well. So you can keep the last 10 most recent session backups and it can back up every five minutes. You can change that. Um, you've got editing setups as well. You can customize these things to make it work for you. 64 levels of undo, maximize that and have it while you're there. Uh, mixing, you can actually set your default EQ. So you can go into plugin and then you can go through and you can see I've got quite a, a range of EQs available to me. Um, but you can use like the air EQ kill there. You've got your seven band EQ there. So there's lots of different options that you can use. And the same you can have for the dynamics, which is all your compressors. Um, and then metering, you can set up your track meters. It's worthwhile doing as well. Um, there's lots of different types. The ones to kind of really stick to are the, probably the K metering because they're the easiest ones to understand at the moment. Um, basically, what it means is that 0 dBV, which is the old uh, meter type with the needle, when that hits zero, that's registered at minus 20 dBFS. That's digital full scale. Um, it's to line up with your uh, A to D converters. You don't want to clip your A to D converters. Um, it's worthwhile knowing what your A to D converters are set at. I think my Apollos are set for minus 16. And as you can see, there's not a minus 16 setup. So I might be not actually really hitting my converters in the sweet spot at all. So I might be better off actually putting mine in K14 and then I'm actually not clipping, but I'm pushing into them a bit harder. Um, so that might be something for you to consider. And then your mix master meters uh, you can set to K12. So that basically just shows you, gives you a 12 dB of headroom for your mix output. As I say, these are uh, optional and worth messing around with and changing with. Um, with the studio, I probably find they're going to be set to K20 uh, in line with the console, just to make sure you don't clip those. Okay, so what I've covered here is uh, setup, um, and that's hardware, uh, your playback engine, your IOs, and some of the preferences. Um, it's just worth actually saying again with the preferences for the colors, track colors, just set there, and then set to track color here, and then they will mix and match together.